Hi there. This tutorial is going to be recreating some cups that I saw on some Facebook groups earlier this week. They were beautiful wine glasses with, um, one of them had black glitter base and the other was just solid black, but they had really bright colors, uh, alcohol ink swirls right here and across the bottom it looked like. Um, I'm gonna show you the trick to making sure your colors pop on a black base like this. I wanted to show you the base I was starting with before I put epoxy on it. It's a black glitter with a lot of color shift. I think you can see it pretty good in the video. So I'm gonna put colors in my inks that are kind of similar. I'm gonna do green, pink, some purple, and a little blue. I probably won't do any red or orange, but just those main colors will really uh, contrast really perfectly. Um, I'm gonna go roughly halfway, maybe a teeny bit more. But before I start any of that part here, I'm going to epoxy, let it cure, and then I'll come back and show you how to make those colors pop up against a dark base like that. Okay, so this is epoxied. It's been sitting here for probably a good seven hours or so. Um, I'm only going to put epoxy to about right here. It's going to move whenever I pick it up, so I don't want it epoxied all the way up for this next layer because I don't want to invite it up above the midline. If it happens, fine, but I'm not really going for that. I have 20 milliliters mixed up. I will not be using all of that. I'm positive. Um, we are going to use Passion Purple. Little Mermaid. magenta. I don't know why that one has a fancy name, but it does. And then regular white. Good old trusty white. I never would have thought that I would use that color more than any other color. So I'm just going to put this here and on the bottom. Nice and thick. We don't want it literally pouring off, which even though mine is right now, I didn't smear it enough. Um, you don't want it literally just falling off, but you definitely want it thick enough that it's going to move. And now that there's a layer all the way around, that probably won't fall off like that again unless I get it a little too intense. So we are just oh, focused. Good gravy. Okay, so we are just doing that right there. I put my last layer of epoxy, the layer over the glitter that I'm putting over right now, um, I used probably almost 25 milliliters on this 10 ounce to get it nice and thick. I was trying to avoid having to do a second layer of epoxy to get this smooth enough, and it worked. It's pretty smooth. Just a little bit right here on the corners, but that's okay. That's not really that big of a deal. So I'm just going to kind of smooth this out. I think I want to go up just a teeny bit further. I didn't go quite up as much as I thought I did. All right, so nice and thick there. We're going to let that turn for just a minute. Make sure you've got something working underneath here because the epoxy drips and the alcohol inks are notorious for beating up and rolling right off. Almost every single tutorial I've done so far has had that happen at least once in every video. So I'm just going nice and thick here. I've got a really thick spot right there. So I'm using nowhere near what I prepared, but that's okay. So I'm gonna let that kind of even out just a minute. I'll probably end up using my embossing gun. Just a little cheapy one from the scrapbooking section at Joann's. Every drop that we're going to put on here, we're going to follow it up with white right in the middle of it. That's what's going to make this really stand out. So let's get started with mermaid first. I'm just going to kind of drop it around sporadic. No real rhythm there. Don't forget to do it in a way that it would roll over the other side, or roll over the edge to the bottom. 
Now let's put a drop of white right in the middle of each one of those. Oh, there's that bead that I was just talking about. Looking for all my drops. It's pretty hard whenever it's on the dark base like this. All right, so now we'll go ahead and do a little pink. It's just, I know you can't really see where this is landing, but when I add the white in the middle, it'll be real obvious. It's already starting to kind of come together. This is a little different than all the other um, alcohol inks that I've done. So now let's do our few drops of purple that we've got room for. I like that those are already starting to blend like we need them to. I had a little too much epoxy right here at the bottom. And so it's really swirling a little more than what I would have anticipated or planned, but that's okay. Got a nice little swirl on the bottom there. This white is what makes that really pop on the black. One more drop there. And we are going to just let this rotate for just a second. I wish that wasn't quite so runny, but that's all right. It's not the end of the world. So we're going to almost spill that epoxy. Good gravy. All right. So we're going to take this off. And we are going to give it some vertical movement. It's not going to go much further than what we've made our, as our defining line. Um... It's not solid, covered completely. That's all right. It's still gonna be really, really pretty. So just giving it that up and down motion is what's gonna give us these waves right there. Another reason you want to work over your surface or protect your surface is because this very well could and probably will um, drop off the end. Need one more drop right there. Let's give it just, we're gonna encourage it to have some color there. I just added a little bit more pink right there. See, it's already soaking right in. Probably not going to need to heat this up this time. Maybe a little bit since I just added that. It's kind of solid right there. Let's do a little bit right there too. Just kind of work that in there. We're going to kind of let it drip right here. We're going to let gravity take over on the bottom here. Kind of give us a little bit more of a jaggedy edge. See how that's kind of pulled up right there? We're just manipulating it. Just kind of get it to go in the directions that you want. I'm not mad at that at all. It's really pretty. Like I mentioned earlier, I saw a couple of ladies that did this type of um, design on a wine glass, and man, it was so gorgeous. I just really wanted to see. I already had this glittered, so I thought for sure it would be worth giving it a shot since I already had half the process done. So I'm just going to try and manipulate and see if maybe I can cover up that glitter on the bottom. It really doesn't matter, honestly. It's kind of cool whenever it peekaboos through. I don't know if you can hear it, but my miniature schnauzer is in here with me today. 
He's not usually allowed in here whenever I'm working, especially when I'm recording, but um, he's being a little clingy lately. Oh, one more thing. Make sure that whenever you're doing this, you need something that is really grippy. I've got this shelf liner on here where I can really, really give this some pressure. Uh, if it's loose, it's gonna fall off. I've been very fortunate that I have not made that mistake, but I know that day will come. It's just written in the stars. I'm positive of it. So that's all I'm gonna do. It's gonna sit and rotate for about an hour. About an hour into it is about when we get an idea of what it's gonna look like in the long run, I feel like. Unless this is super duper runny, um, then it takes a little longer, but it's really pretty. It really pops. Uh, you can see the colors in the glitter kind of picking up there. Kind of makes it a little more obvious. This side's really pretty. I'm gonna see if I can't just get a little bit more gravity over here. Kind of fill in those peekaboo spots right there. You can kind of see it right there. I'm just gonna see if I can manipulate that just a teensy bit more. Yep, that's it. We're gonna let that rotate for a little bit. I'll come back and take a video of what it looks like in about an hour. And then that's it. Once this is done, uh, I'll put another coat of epoxy on it. Depending on what this feels like, if it's rough, I'll um, sand it and do one more coat. But if it's not, that's it. We'll be done. I love ink swirls because they're just all different. They're all unique to each other, to themselves, just because that is almost impossible to duplicate. If somebody says they can make something exact, they're delusional or they're magic. One of those two. So that's it for this. We're going to let it rotate for the next hour or so. Get on there. And I'll be back with a picture of that in just a second. Okay, as soon as I hit stop on my record, I decided to go ahead and add some of this to the top. It'll make it a little bit smoother and it'll help those edges not be quite so harsh. So I'm just gonna go really carefully around the rim here. I'm gonna do everything in my power to not touch where the ink is. I may end up regretting this, but we're gonna find out. I'm just gonna do that. Just giving that rim some attention there. I'm going to get it as close to that as I can without actually touching it. With my finger anyways. I don't mind touching it with the edge of the epoxy that I'm squeegeeing. I'm okay with that. Oops. Dripped. All right, so now I'm gonna let this drip really slowly, really thin, right at that edge right there. I'm talking just a hair, just the skinniest I can manage right there. I'm hoping it doesn't mess it up. Oh, it's definitely breaking up the solid. Not necessarily the way I wanted it to, but that's all right. Just got a bald spot right there. All right. So that gave us what we needed there. I did get a little bit too much right there. It's all right, as it spins, it'll swirl and swirl some more. 
just kind of getting that a little bit away. Got a spot right there that didn't quite connect. I'm gonna zap it with a little heat to smooth it out just a little bit. You don't wanna go overboard on your heat because it will cause too much movement in your inks right there and you can scorch your epoxy. But I want that to go that way. Dang it, that's not quite what I was wanting to do. So we're gonna take it off and we're gonna let it move just a little bit. Kind of bring this line right here back down where it needs to be. Plus it kind of gives it a little bit more connection to that new layer of epoxy. And I'm actually going to make my spinner go, my, my turner go the other direction now. Yeah, I kind of wanted that to ooch up over the border there. That's perfect. Give it a little bit there. Yeah. Voila. That's pretty good. Different. Pretty. Colorful. Kind of unicorny, mermaidy. Oh, I see it. I gotta put that back down. It's gonna end up with a really big uh, bald spot if I don't. Even though it is kind of peekabooing through, I really don't want that entirely. Got a couple spots here and there that have just kind of gone all the way down to the cup layer, it seems. I don't know why it does that. I've been known to touch that with my finger a time or two to kind of get some epoxy moving there, like this right here. Kind of doing that. No rules against that if you don't go too crazy with it. Yeah, kind of assist it, so to speak. That's pretty much exactly what I was going for. So now I'm going to let this turn for about an hour. Oh, there's a big old spot that I missed. Just kind of help that fill in so that it'll do the rest on its own. Put a little color right there in the middle. Yeah. All right, now I mean it. I'm gonna put this on the turner. I'm gonna leave it for an hour. This is not anywhere near what it's gonna look like an hour from now. But it's still gonna be really pretty. Those color combos there are really great. But I'm gonna turn the direction of this the other way. There. All right. We'll see you in about an hour. All right, this is about as much as it's gonna move. So this is our end result. And I will just set it aside. Maybe I'll slap a niece's name on it for Christmas. Maybe I'll list it as ready to go. Who knows? So if you have any questions, give me a comment. I do my best to answer those regularly. I keep an eye on that. If there's anything you'd like to see, please um, drop that in the comments as well subscribe when you get a chance. You'll see all my latest uploads and videos that I've done. I'm trying to do a few short, sweet, and simple ones. Have a good one.